Hi, welcome to Ray Suarez Real Estate School. Today we're going to be talking about the topic of how to become a real estate broker. Uh, in this course, we're going to be talking everything you need to know on how to prepare for a state exam also so that you can become a real estate broker uh, here in Florida. But also this course for anybody that's looking to take a real estate broker's course in any state here in the United States, also this course can help you out also uh, because it provides a lot of the information that's basic and it's the foundation for any real estate course. So again, this uh, course can help you out. Uh, if you're studying to uh, prepare for the state exam for real estate broker and again also for sales associates too anybody who wants to become an agent again there's a lot of information in here that can be used uh, for a review uh, and also as a background to help you out in any state exam so let's take a look at title what title is okay so when we talk about title we're talking about a bundle of rights and that bundle of rights it's a right of disposition the right of use the right of possession and the right of exclusion when you have all that bundle of rights, you have what's called title. <clears throat> and when you have title and you have all that bundle of rights, you have it in fee simple. Fee simple. Okay? So anytime we're going to be looking any any contracts, the contracts for purchase and sale, uh, we're looking for a mortgage contracts. What we're purchasing is title. What we're selling is title. What we're borrowing for is title to the property, okay? Because remember, we're, gonna, we're not going to pick up the property and take it away. We're going to be buying these rights to this property. So it's the right of disposition, the right of use, the right of possession, and the right of exclusion. And all of these bundle of rights equal title, okay? And again, again, you might want to memorize uh, these uh, acronyms, D-U-P-E, DUPE, okay? So again, when it comes to the state exam, you want to put the acronyms on the tape on your uh, uh, sheet your paper sheet they're gonna give you a blank sheet of paper uh, for uh, your math problems and, and things of that nature so use that that paper before you get started jot down any acronym anything that comes into mind because later on that might be a crutch as you're taking the exam and it'll help you and it'll jog your memory too <clears throat> okay real estate and real property now the property you're in right now all the four walls where you're sitting in that's called real estate but the moment that we add title to real estate, and number two here, the moment you add title to the real estate, then from here on in, all the documents that you're gonna be looking at are gonna be referring to real property. Real property. So the purchase and sales contract is gonna be referring to real property. The mortgage is gonna be referring to real property. The listing agreement is gonna be referring to real property. The deed is gonna be referring to real property. So all the documents we're gonna be looking at is gonna be referring to real property okay we have this word now that we're also going to learn it's called freehold 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 is another way of saying estate or it's another way of saying tenancy or it's another way of saying fee simple so you're going to learn here that in this terminology that we're going to learn the banks and in the real estate, when they, they created these words, they, they kind of created it to confuse you, okay? But in, in a sense, it's the terminology that we have to become familiar with. So freehold is another way of saying fee simple. It's a way of saying the bundle of rights that we have. Now, when we have this bundle of rights, we have it for an indefinite period of time, okay? So that's why it's called freehold, for an indefinite period of time. Number two, it's called freehold. It's an estate. It's a tenancy also. It's fee simple. You can also see it, number four, as a life estate, okay? And during that life of the, of the property, the person owns that property, and then later on when he passes away, when he dies, the property passes on, number, number um, it should have been number five here, but it goes into the remainder man, okay? So it goes to the remainder man. So again, when you have a life estate during the period of time that you're living it, it's called a life estate. And then afterwards, it's going to be going to the remainder man, the remainder man. And number six, again, we have title to the property. Okay. It's also an estate. It's a tenancy. And when we have all of this, number seven, we have the bundle of rights. And we already saw that the bundle of rights is the right of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion. So that's called freehold. We also have non-freehold. Non-freehold is for a limited time. It's also called a leasehold. And basically what it is, is a lease contract. So when you have a lease contract, it's called a leasehold. And you have the right of use, 
possession and exclusion, but you don't have the right of disposition. So in a non-freehold, it's a lease contract. It's a lease agreement that you have. So again, in a lease, you have use, possession, and exclusion, but you don't have the right of disposition. Okay, so comparing the two, well, we have a freehold or a fee simple property. It's for an unlimited time. Whereas we have a non-freehold or a leasehold, it's for a limited time. Okay, so time is limited in the lease. Okay, so let's just look at them side by side. So for the most part, what we're going to be looking at is looking at title of a property. We're going to look at a property estate or a tenancy. And we're going to get the property fee simple. That means that we're going to get all the bundles of rights. All the bundles of rights are number seven. Uh, the right of disposition, the right of use, the right of possession, and the right of exclusion. Now when we have this bundle of rights, we can have this property in what's called severalty. Or we can have it, let me just make this a little bit uh, wider so we can see this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so number one in severalty. So when you have title to the property, remember when you have an estate or you have title, you have the right of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion. So it's called estate. It's an estate or is a tenancy that we have in the property. Now, in number one here, you can have the property in severalty. And severalty means just one person. Or you can have it, number two, in a tenancy in common. Two or more people that have this property. Now, what tenancy in common has is the right of heirs. The right of heirs states that if two people have the property and one of them dies, then the heirs of that person that dies is going to get part of that property. Okay, so it's called tenancy in common. And number three, you have joint tenancy or you also have a joint estate. And what this one has is the right of survivorship. On number three, so if you have a joint tenancy or a joint estate, that means two or more people have the property. It could be two brothers, two cousins. But if one of them dies, the survivor is going to get the property. The survivor is going to get fee simple all of the property, all of title. Okay, so when two or more people have the property, it's going to be the right of survivorship. The survivor is going to get fee simple the property. Well, again, don't forget fee simple is the right of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion, the bundle of rights. And in number four, we have what's called tenancy by the entireties. Tenancy by the entireties is a married couple, husband and wife, and they're considered whole. They're considered an entirety. And if one of them dies, then the survivor is going to get the property in fee simple. So number four, we're talking about right of survivorship, and again, it's called fee simple, where they're going to go ahead and receive all, the survivor is going to receive all of the uh, rights of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion. Okay, so again, when we have title, again, in the, in the contracts, when we sign the deed, when we uh, apply for a loan, that's what we're going to be applying for. What is it we want to have the property by ourselves, one person, or in tenancy in common, ten, joint tenancy, tenancy by the entireties. And we'll go look at that uh, in a few minutes when we take a look also at a 1003 uh, loan application also.